We're now switching the machine over from steel to aluminum. So here are the steps we need to make. First of all, remove the steel wire. Remove your welding gun. Remove your steel wire from your welding gun to avoid a double feed later on. Get your aluminum wire. In this case, we opted for 4043 and 035 diameter. You could have picked other alloys or other diameters as well. Straighten the end of your wire out so it feeds better. Then remove your steel drive roll. Replace with your aluminum drive roll. Use this side for 364. Use that side facing you for 035. Reduce your drive roll pressure so you don't crush the aluminum wire. You want to have a drive roll pressure about one and a half under two for sure. Then you, under, you install your aluminum gun with your aluminum uh, liner or carbon graphite liner meant for aluminum. And last but not least, you switch out your gas from 7525 to 100% argon. So now you go to aluminum 4043. DC electrode positive, we didn't change the polarity on the front, we're good. 100% argon, we switched this. 40 to 50 CFH on the flow rate. So let's pull the trigger, perch the 7525 out, and make sure we have 40 to 50 CFH on the flow rate, bottom of the ball. So that perched our wire and perched our gas and fed our wire out at the same time. Now we have two pieces of aluminum. We have some quarter inch here we're going to be welding later on. We're going to start off with some hundred thousandths. Hundred thousandths is right in between 14 gauge and 1 eighth. So we're going to pick 035. We can either pick the 1 8 because we have the thick work table as a heat sink under it, then we just need to move faster than normal. So we would be right here at 18 and a half volts and 375 inches per minute. 375 inches a minute and 18 and a half volts. So let's see how that works.
So by the soot you can see my gun angle was not perfect. If my gun angle would have been perfect and the gun would have been up a little bit more, we should have had equal soot on both sides and a little bit less. I had a little bit shallow of an angle here so the soot is only on the back side, not on the front side. Little bit peppering in there, not too bad. That is because we did not clean any oxides off or prep anything. But now the truth comes looking at the back side. Full penetration weld, no cracks in it. And the table as the heat sink did its job with the slightly too high settings. It kept all the material contained. So now the next step is using the same wire, 4043, 035, all the way up to quarter inch. 490 inches per minute at 23 volts. Same thing here. We are not going to have proper joint prep, but we do have a sheer cut piece of metal here that has like a little bit of a v-groove like right on there so we're going to use that v-groove to create somewhat of a bevel we're teeter-tottering on some bb's on here the ground clamp is not on the part as it's supposed to be and the table will act as a heat sink even though we have welded on it it's warmed up a little bit but not enough to worry about it so we're going to weld this with aluminum. It's going to be a spray arc. All you should hear is a hiss, no, no crackle, no pop. And it should be one smooth operation. Your contact tip to work distance is supposed to be about three quarters of an inch. So let's see how that works. So you can tell my gun angle was a little bit better. There's actually some soot on this side. And also you have a little bit of a cold start and you heard a couple pops in the beginning. Maybe it could have taken another 0.3 volt or something. This is you, the operator, depending on what alloy you're welding, what wire you're using, if you have a heat sink under it or not. If this was propped up on some TIG rods, I'm pretty sure it would have been hot enough. The heat sink here pulling the heat out, it could have used a little bit more voltage. This is 3003 material. Different base alloy requires different small adjustments. Then it heated up really nice and at the end there's a very minor crater. You could have triggered it a couple more times and filled that crater. And now moment of truth. Backside. You don't really see much at all. It kind of looks like there might be some coming through here. And at the end, you see a small deformation there. If you wanted to get 100% weld, if this was a critical item, I'd probably go in with a hard wheel designed for aluminum, grind this out a little bit till I see the other side, the root, and then weld it and fill it in. So now I'm welding the back side here without additional joint prep. So I gave it a couple extra squirts at the end and the crater is gone. You can see the, the bead is much wider and cleaner. That's because this entire piece was now naturally preheated because it's the backside of what we just welded. So you'll have deeper penetration and probably you can see even it coming through here on the startup, on the cold start, which was here, but the piece was preheated. So you see some bleeding through right there. So this is probably pretty close to a full penetration weld, if not a full penetration weld. And I would say this is for sure good for a test piece, but this would probably be good enough in real life. You have to be real careful welding the backside with the same settings being as high as they are. The settings on the door chart are meant for 
let's say, room temperature material. You also heard when I started how there was basically no popping, no crackling, because everything was hotter now. So thank you for sticking it out so long and watching our demonstration on the new MiG 2000i. If you don't have 220 at home and you only have 110, the little brother, the 1400i, is basically the same thing. Less power runs off of 110 only, but same features, same controls, same case, same everything. If you are interested in a budget-friendly MiG machine, don't look too far. The MiG 2000i is just it. Check out usaweld.com for more information. Thank you.